recording, Amy, so you can go when you want. Well, welcome to the September 13th Oshkosh Parks Advisory Board meeting. Um, I don't think we have any other business, so we can do roll call. Uh, Bartelt. Here. Davis. Here. Dearth. Here. Royal. Here. Hudak. Martin. Here. Metz. Here. Millet. Here. And Paul Mary. Here. Thank you, everyone. Amy, did you get your agenda or do you need some help on what we have? I need some help. I believe we have some old business, right? So that we're going to cover. First, we have the approval of the minutes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any comments or questions about the minutes? Lori? Yes. yes. Um, page three of the minutes uh, in reference to um the chief ashkash monument there's just a couple of small um, clarifications i think that are needed there um, it references dr manning but it also in the same sentence uh referenced um john fitzpatrick and michelle Benke. and then um after i think it's about the second uh sentence refers to he but you can't tell if that he is referring to Mr. Fitzpatrick, or inadvertently referring to Dr. Manning, um, who's female. We can make that change. I believe actually it's referring to Ray on that one, so I can make that change. Uh, okay. Actually, it would have been Mr. Fitzpatrick, so, but we can, either way, we'll get Is it covered. It okay. Yeah, I'll change that. <clears throat> Any other changes or corrections? Do we have a motion? I move to uh, make a, a, an amendment clarifying page three reference uh, Chief Oshkosh Monument, uh, changing the or identifying the, the he pronouns uh, to the Correct person. Um, I, Ray, correct me if I'm wrong on procedure. Would it be uh, movement to approve the minutes as amended then? Ah, there you go. We'll yeah. keep it simple. Yeah, we'll just keep it simple. Just we can make note of what you had, Laura or Mayor, and then the minutes and just moved as amended is fine. So moved by the mayor as amended. All right. Devin said she will second. So then, um, given the virtual procedures, we still have to go through the roll call for the um, minute for approval of the minutes. So Bartelt, aye. Davis, aye. Dearth, Dearth. I didn't hear Tony. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Aye. <laughs> All right. Groyle. Aye. Hudak is an aye. Mar Martin, aye. Metz. Aye. Millet. Aye. And Paul Mary. Aye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Amy, the next one, just to give you some help on the agenda, is um, citizen statements not on the agenda. And looking at the participants, I'm not seeing any other uh, citizens here. So we'll jump down to the old business if you'd like. All right. That sounds good. Um, I'll. I'll read that one for you because you can tell you again. I'm almost uh, there. <laughs> um, first item of old business, consider and recommend approval of a Gulf War Memorial Monument at South Park War Memorial area. Um, as I stated in our memo, uh, Mr. Cannon was not able to be at this meeting tonight, uh, but because it was tabled for the next meeting, our recommendation is to have you table it for the next meeting uh, when Mr. Cannon can attend then. We need a motion and a second to do so. Motion. This is second. This is Deb. Thank you. All right. So motion to table the the approval of the Gulf War Monument at South Park. Language uh, Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Dearth. Royal. Aye. Hudak. Is an I Martin? 
Aye. Metz? Aye. Millet? Aye. And Palmieri? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Amy, you want me to keep reading? Second item of old business is to consider and recommend placement of sign at the George Washington Triangle for a donated Liberty Elm tree. And um, we do have Mr. Hagelin, who is vice president of the Wisconsin Society Sons of the American Revolution on the, um, the meeting tonight. And um, I believe Mr. Sturm has been in conversation with Mr. Hagelin as to some of the questions and concerns that the uh, staff as well as the board had. Um, so I will, I think, um, Bill, if you're ready to help on anything, I'm going to let you be able to take this over. Maybe you can fill the board in on where you're at with conversations, I guess, and then we can have any questions from the board. Okay, thank you. Um, I uh, had some communication with uh, Mr. Hagland and, uh, and fortunately he's here with us to, to speak to some of the questions. Um, I think um, we, we heard from the neighborhood association uh, regarding the uh, plaque and uh, it, it sounded like they would prefer to have a plaque that is similar to what we use for the mm -hmm. Memorial tree program. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, asking Mr. Hagman to kind of explain what the intention of the sons of the American revolution are with the installation of the tree and also uh, provision of the plaque um, that they have. Uh, so uh, I guess I'll turn it over to the board to see if they have any specific questions about it. And uh, then Mr. Hagelin can respond to that. Is it still the um, same signage we were talking about like, like before? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. Yeah, and the intention was to install it on a black uh, ornamental uh, post, which is similar to some of the uh, poles we've been using on other installations like that. Um, we would um, put it on a backing uh, board so that it, uh, you know, is a little, little more vandal proof. Um, and then uh, our intention would be to install it adjacent to the tree in kind of a mulch area so that, you know, we can eliminate some of the the trimming and any extra maintenance around both the tree and the, the, the uh, sign. Um, this is Deb. I'm sorry I wasn't at last month's meeting, so I don't. I'm, I would like clarifying why it, we're making this large plaque different from the other memorial tree plaques. Would you like me to answer that? If you could, please. Okay. When they talk about these memorial plaques, I think they're smaller, like 14 by 14 and made of granite. And that's a memorial plaque for a memorial for something. This is a historic educational plaque and there is just not enough room on this um, 14 by 14 granite to put down what is trying to be put on, what is put on there to explain what the Liberty Tree is and its importance in our history. Does that kind of answer your question? Yes. Excuse me. Do we have um, a photo again uh, so that folks can get their memory refreshed on the visual? Oh, thank you, Becky. Anyone have any questions as to the importance of the Liberty tree in our history? <clears throat> no, but this is actually like from that tree. Yes, it is. Wow. I had to ask how they did that and they gathered acorns and that that were laying around at the base of it back before it was chopped down by the British to heat the homes and make campfires in uh, Boston when it was under siege by Washington. And they're oh. raising these in uh, Washington, or uh, Maine, I'm sorry. 
If I may, Mr. Hagland, um, some of the history regarding the Liberty Tree references um, uh, a band of discontented merchants and artists hanging an effigy in the tree to protest the Stamp Act. What type of effigy would that have been? I think what they did is they made a, a stuffed dummy of some of the tax collectors that uh, the king had appointed tax collectors in Boston because Boston was our major shipping point uh, prior to the war. Everything came and left through Boston and they started putting taxes on the stamp mm -hmm. back tax, the whiskey tax, the uh, uh, tea tax. So they would burn effigies of the tax collectors in the trees by just hanging them up there and setting them on fire, whatever they happen to do. At one point, I think it was Patrick Henry's boat was captured by the British, so they dragged the boat up on there and burned it in protest to this. And the uh, dissonance in that were the original patriots. Um. Yeah, I, I found it really interesting uh, reading about this and uh, it talks about they beheaded and burned the symbol before heading to Oliver's house. Uh, sounds rather violent. <laughs> it was a revolution. <laughs> Protests back then were a lot uh, more violent <laughs> than they are now. They would actually go to somebody's house and if they refused to step down as a tax collector, they'd burn the house down. Wow. Devin says 12 stars on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sign. It's interesting to to memorialize such a violent um, part of the revolution in this way. Um, with the effigy that went on for so many years um, after the Civil War, um, I don't know. It, 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 I have mixed feelings about it, but that's just me. Are you able to see my screen sharing the sign now? Just yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> yep. And the whole thing about the Liberty Tree, that's where the Patriots met, because if they met in a tavern and the British found out about it, they would destroy the tavern. So they met underneath this tree that is now uh, down by Boston Commons, I think, is where they chopped it down, and it's called Liberty Square. If memory serves me correct, I, I've been doing with so much history, I'm starting to get confused as to what's where in Boston, because it's it's a different town. It's, it's very interesting. Originally, when we were looking at this about the applicability to Oshkosh, because um, I feel like, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is, is you know, with the, the memorial trees and all the plaques and all that stuff had a, a lot of pertinence to our community. And granted, we are part of the United States, but as far as this sign and this tree and this location, I'm just, I'm curious more of the, like, like the why behind it. Why, why can you describe that a little bit more to me? I just don't quite understand the, the applicability to this location and time and, and everything like that. Sure. Um, we started setting up uh, Liberty trees in um, different, different points of the state. And we selected Oshkosh, especially that site because of the George Washington statue, because this all stemmed up and he was a command. That's where he first took over as commander in chief of the Continental Army was at Boston, and laid siege to it for almost a year. The other places that we're doing it, we've done. We have them at the surgeons' quarters, and I think it's Portage. And the other thing that that my chapter is doing, I'm president of the Captain Hendrick Oppomut Society or chapter, which is almost the entire eastern half of the state north of Milwaukee, uh, we're actually putting Liberty Trees at the uh, grave sites of Patriots. And in our area, we have four Patriots. So we're working, we've already got one in Kakana where two Patriots are buried. Uh, I'm working with the Oneida tribe now to put um, one at Paulus's Gravesite on a reservation, but I think for that one, we're putting it out at their uh, 
a veterans park because that's where they want it. And it makes sense being their first US patriot or veteran. And then we have one more in the, within this chapter that's going down in the Stockbridge area where the Stockbridge Muncie tribe has their um, grave site and a Delaware tribal member is buried there who is also a patriot. So we're picking historic areas where they have some history back to the Revolutionary War. Ray or Bill, are you aware? Is there any existing city ordinance or code that specifies types of signs or size of signs that would show whether this is consistent or not? This would really fall under our donation policy as a, a recognition object is what we're um, viewing it as because of the donation of the tree and then recognition of that. Um, as far as signage goes, size of the signage, um, that would be through our sign code and um, the size of this sign, I, I think, would be well under what would be in the code for what's allowed in parks and so forth. So that's kind of how we're bringing it forward as part of the donation policy. That... Mr. Haglin, is this a, you just talked about other areas throughout the state, is this the same size sign the same informational sign that you're using in all these areas identical the only thing that we change on the bottom is like the one that we're doing out at uh oneida uh the local chapter the daughters of the american revolution are joining so their name will go on the bottom and because it's not actually at uh captain paulus's grave site we're going to have to put his name on there uh, that it's in honor of him if it's at the grave site then we don't put the names on who's four on there. But all of them are identical. And, and we've uh, uh, brought that up at our National Congress for the Sons of the American Revolution out in Washington. And they're starting to use this same sign nationwide. And what did you say it was made out of again? It's actually a, a double plastic. And when I worked with the sign company, they said it's a type of plastic that they use for apartment buildings and this, that it's gonna be outside for an extended period because it's weather resistant. Um, I looked into using the brass like we use at uh, his most historic sites, but that's $3,000 and my chapter can't afford that. <laughs> that's about $2,900 over what we have in our budget. <laughs> And you said it's black. It looks brown to me. Is it black or brown? Uh, I'm slightly colorblind, but I think it's I think it's black on a white background. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I like it. Well, thank you. It looks it looks like typical historical signs to me at other venues. When we decided on the sign concept, I looked at a lot of historical signs throughout the country and how they were shaped. And that's kind of the tablet shape, I think, is what they call that. And uh, we wanted the elm tree up at the top of it because that's that's what it's all about. And the elm tree is a type that doesn't have the disease, can't get it, won't spread it. So that's the other thing that we started looking into is to make sure that when we put a tree in, it wouldn't affect any others. So this is an item that... Um... The board will want to recommend for or against because the council, because it's part of the donation, um, would accept and the council would have to make the final decision on that. So, I would like to move to accept it if that's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> I'll second. Was that you, Scott? 
Yes, sorry. Okay, sorry. No, that's fine. I it, I thought it looked like your box and show had um lighted up, so I just wanted to be sure. All right, I'll do roll call then. Uh Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Dearth. Aye. Royal. Aye. Hudak. Seven is an I. Martin. No. Metz. Aye. Millet. Aye. And Palmieri. No. All right. Um, motion passed then seven to two. All right. We move on to new business. Um, consider and recommend a senior citizen bolt launch season pass. Uh, Ray, do you want to give us some background? Sure. Um, this was something, and we've discussed this in the in our department a couple of years. Um, we've had the requests from boaters in the past, and actually, it's something that um, the mayor had talked to me earlier this year about taking a look at. And um, essentially, we did some surveying of some of the other area communities that have boat launches, public boat launches, and. Um, a way to possibly lessen the burden on some of our senior citizens in the city is to consider a, a reduced fee for their um, boat launch season pass. And so in our memo, you can see what we included. Um, I'll just read through it real quickly for the public. The city of Nina provides a $5 discount for those 55 and older. City of Menasha, $5 discount for those 55 and older. Winnebago, County parks, $5 discount for those 55 and older, and then a $15 discount for their three year or multi year pass. <clears throat> Village of Fox Crossing, $2 discount for those 55 and older. City of Omro uh, does not provide a senior citizen discount. So, as we looked at this and um, estimating what impact it might have on the boat launch, right now we don't track the age of those individuals that buy passes. Um, it's something that if we implemented, we could fairly easily do uh, when people come in and purchase those, checking their ID, checking for a birth date. Um, and also with the new electronic kiosks, they still need to come in to get their sticker so we can still confirm when they purchase it at um, the kiosk on uh, their age. So we're, we're comfortable going ahead with something like this. And just to give you an idea, um, we took about a three year average for the resident uh, city annual passes over the last three years is about 420 season boat launch passes. Multi year, it's about 160. So I estimated if even if at 10% of those are 55 and older, um, we'd be um, basically losing about $450 at 10%. On the high end, if we had 20% of those individuals, it'd be about $900. So I don't think it's going to be a huge loss for the boat launch fund. Um, to consider doing this, so we're we're supportive of the idea. Um, we would recommend that it um, obviously be implemented in 2022. It would be for individuals 55 and older, and for those um, of the city of Oshkosh only at this point. I see Deb has a question. <laughs> It just seems that people that can afford a boat could probably afford the not to get a discount. Um, is there a way to know? I mean, we have some pretty wealthy senior citizens in our town. Uh, I mean, I can so what? I don't know that this is a way to save money. I mean, if somebody could prove that they had a need, but it, I don't know. I, I think it's not wise. That's just my view. Well, I was going to ask you, what do, do we have? I don't know enough about pricing for other things in our parks. Do they have senior citizen discounts for other services and offerings like across the board? Is it kind of hit or miss what we offer those discounts for? <laughs> I just am curious, like as a department, what do we do as far as senior citizen discounts? Um, the only other one I can think of would be at the pool for season passes and daily admissions. Uh, but otherwise, the, basically, the shelter reservations are uh, just based on residency.
Any other questions or comments? I think that looks from what you provided us, Ray. I mean, it looks like everybody around us, except for Amro, has some sort of a discount for 65 or older, correct? That's what we where you found, yes, correct. Yeah, so um I'm I'm for it. I'm for it. So start tuning in while we before we vote. And I guess just um, uh, you know, given the request um came from a you know, community member uh that we consider, you know, either senior or veteran discount and um that uh, we do have a significant portion of the population, the senior population who are on fixed incomes here in the city. Uh, so I'll be supporting it. Becky, I don't know if you just said something. Yeah, do we have a discount for um, veterans? We do not. Yep. Is there any way to know how many of those seniors that are um, low income actually own a boat? I mean, I, I don't know because I don't I don't own a boat. But is there is there a way to tell that this is going to be helpful to our seniors on low income, or is it just going to be another discount for people that can afford it? We would not have any information like that. I'm not even the DNR may because they track it. I'm not sure if they ask your age when you register your boat even. So I couldn't tell you that. I think we have a lot of fishermen who are senior citizens that would benefit from having this, you know, who are in a fixed income. And obviously we have a lot of boating population that have some really nice boats. We also have a population that does a lot of fishing and it's their recreation. And, and quite honestly, I, I don't know how, if this is the proper way to refer to it, but a, a lot of, what do they call them? John boats, just basic kind of. Um, I, somebody help me out. That's better right term. I, I think it like the ones that they use for duck hunting, Lori. It's called a John boat. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody has that has a boat has a ton of money. There's some chunky boats up on the up on the river and on the lake, and people fishing on them. So yeah, um, especially have a, have a lot of money. If somebody would like to make a motion, what this would do is go to the council. Um, when we go through the budget process over the next few months, we make the council aware of these items. And then at the end of the year in December, we typically take all our um, city fees to the council for approval. So we would include it at that time, but let the council know that we've considered it as well as, as part of our discussions. This is last year, I'll make a motion. Second, Lori. Bartelt? Aye. Davis? Aye. Durth? I'll go with aye. Okay, Groyle? Aye. Hudak? There's an aye. Martin? Aye. Metz? Aye. Millet? Aye. And Palmieri? Aye. All right, motion passed 9 to 0 then. And hey, Stacy, I'm going to do a Tanya and Tanya and Tanya and Anya. In the beginning, you were saying my name correctly, Balette, but you changed it to Millet somewhere along our way here. So I'm going to have to like write it down because then I start to question myself and I'm not sure. So thank you for correcting me, though. I do, I'm, yeah. I'm always open to that. I let it ride for like a few weeks and I was just like, I better say something. So thank you. <laughs> if you ever, if you ever forgive a think about the razors, Gillette, same way, just put am in front of it. <gasps> Oh, that's probably going to work for me. There you Good go. Stuff. Thank you. <laughs> hey, let's move on to staff reports. Um, um, I'm keeping mine brief because I'm under the weather yet. So I'm trying to stop from talking. Um, just wanted to give you a quick update on the Lakeshore Park Four Seasons building because you probably haven't heard much. We've been working um, pretty diligently with Smith Group and all the city departments to finalize the bid specs. Um, there's a number of um, items related out there for, you know, construction in the road that we need to do um, all the DNR permitting stormwater items. So it's been a, um, a longer process, I would say, than, uh, than what I expected coming up with the bid specs. I do have a meeting 
um, later this week with our city engineering and public works department to um, finalize those on our end. And then Smith group will do their final revision. And actually it's, I think it's helping us out because the longer we wait, I think the, the pricing of the materials um, we're seeing come down. So I think it'll benefit us as well to um, bid it out a little bit a month or so later than what I anticipated. I had hoped it'd go out in August, but like I said, it's just been a longer process getting all the bid specs put together. So just wanted to give you an update on that. So my goal is um, hopefully we'll between um, the next two weeks between our staff and Smith group have that ready to go out to bids. Um, I don't have it listed, but I just wanted to quickly talk about um, the next meeting. Um, the, the mask mandate or the mask policy for city buildings is set to be reviewed again on October 1st. Um, I can't say what the council and the city manager are going to decide, but I would expect um, just from the last conversations, they may leave it up to boards and commissions on their comfort level for continuing their meetings virtual or in person. Um, so I guess at this point, I would recommend that we remain in person in October, unless we get direction from the city manager and council that we have to come back in person, unless somebody feels strongly about that. I, I just feel that the way the numbers are going right now, I, I don't foresee it changing real quickly, but. Ray, did you mean what? that you think we should remain virtual in October or in person? Virtual, I'm sorry if I said it in reverse, so. Lori, was that what you're going to correct me on? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I would I would think we're going to remain virtual, and that would be my suggestion to the board. And I'll keep you posted if something changes. Um, and then the other item, because it just came out, was the um, the workshop with the diversity, equity, inclusion committee, as well as um, the landmarks commission. Staff apologizes for not getting the meeting noticed properly, so that it could stay on uh, the scheduled original date but I believe it has now been scheduled for next Monday at 2 p.m. Um, so you should have received an invite for that. And um, I'd encourage you to attend. Uh, there's gonna be some, I think some further discussion on uh, some of the verbiage, some of the ideas on the signage and just a little bit more on the history. So if you can attend, I would uh, see if you can plan to attend that as well. That's all I have, Amy. <laughs> Ray, all right. Bill, looks like you're up next. Yes, thank you. Um, kind of similar updates to what I've had in the past. Um, our Memorial Tree Program has really gone gangbusters this year. So um, we have an additional dozen trees we have to plant here this fall. So, uh, you know, the orders keep coming in. So um, that's good for the program. It's helped us get a lot of new trees out in the park. So um, that's been positive. Um, I also wanted to mention too that um, we had done a, a large uh, grant funded tree planting uh, project in the Sawyer Payne and uh, uh, Neighborhood Association territory. And some folks may notice that some of the trees have been taken out there. Um, those trees were under warranty from the uh, contractor. So they're in the process of replacing some of those trees. So uh, I just had kind of noticed something in the media that People were asking what happened to some of the trees. So um, we usually ask for a two year warranty on our uh, products from the nursery. So that's what's going on there. So they're going to be replacing uh, a number of trees in, in that uh, planting that we installed last fall. Um, also, uh, we started working on our stump grinding operations, which is typical for the fall months. Uh, we try to uh, go through the entire city and remove all the stumps from trees we've taken out over the course of the year. Uh, this year, uh, we've taken out a lot of trees, uh, given that the um, ash mortality has been very high. So um, we probably got close to 300 just west of 41 alone. And uh, many of those are fairly large. So uh, we're asking for folks to be patient with us, trying to accomplish both tree removals and cleaning up the stumps so that we can replant next spring in some of those locations. So. Um, but we've, we've got quite a bit to do before the winter hits. So we like to try to get that wrapped up by, um, at least the beginning of December, if we possibly can. So, um, so that's, uh, ongoing. Um, we're also, as I mentioned, continuing removing, uh, affected ash. Um, we've got, uh, over 700 just on terraces alone that we're tackling and, uh, you know, probably two to. Uh, 250 in Riverside Cemetery, and then um, many in some of the park areas too. So 
Uh, right now we're focusing on trying to get the, um, the trees out that are along the street that are posing the highest liability and, uh, you know, getting that corrected before we get into some of the, the uh, property, the wooded properties like conservancy and that sort of thing. So um, we're still treating some ash. Um, we've had a um, ongoing treatment program for about 10 years. So uh, we have uh, identified about 600 trees that um, we've continued to treat over the years. And uh, those are all doing quite well. Um, so we we hope to continually to manage some of those better trees and and keep them healthy if we can. So um, that's essentially all I have. If anyone's got any questions, be happy to entertain it. Bill, I'd just like to uh, thank you for um, the uh, that street tree and urban canopy. Uh, report that was done back in, I think it was 2013 or so. Yes. Um, I, I had not seen that before and uh, it was really kind of fun and interesting. And, and I know we have a, a number of like newer parks board members, but uh, once we come to other business, um, I was hoping that we could put that on a future agenda to review that um, or, or at least have it as part of our packet and um, maybe talk about, you know, what some of our options might be for revisiting that um, if if that's an option. Yeah, yeah, that is kind of fun information. Um, you know, I I've heard it um, from others before that they they say money doesn't grow on trees, but when you kind of look at the the value that the trees give back to the community, it's it's substantial, and I feel that that also warrants the continuation and uh, upgrading of our forestry programs too, because it does provide monetary benefits, uh, even though you don't necessarily see it in a financial manner like that. Well, and the reason why I was, um, you know, looking around for information is uh, had several citizens um, in recent months and, and more recently in the last couple of weeks, you know, asking what the city is doing as far as, um, you know, climate mitigation and, and got, as specific to ask about carbon sequestration and things that are a little bit above my pay grade in terms of calculating. Um, so, uh, in order to try and respond to that individual, I, um, you know, came across all kinds of interesting things and, and this was 1 of them to be able to share with them. And then, of course, you know, what happened? They said, oh, can we do it again? <laughs> We can put that on a future agenda, just have a presentation by Bill and question answer type thing as well. Anything else for Bill? All right, move on to other business. All right, well, I guess that wraps up this meeting. I will make a motion to adjourn. This is Deb second. Deb second. All right, um, Bartelt. Aye. Warren, did you say yes? Aye. Aye, yep. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Davis? Aye. Dearth? Aye. Groyal? Aye. Kudak says aye. Martin? Aye. Metz? Aye. Millette? Got a girl. Aye. <laughs> Call Mary? Aye. All right, motion passed 9 to 0. Thank you, everyone. I just want to say thanks to Kobe and Joe for showing up as our alternates. And even though you didn't have voting rights, and in the future, if you don't, still feel free to participate in the uh, discussion. So thanks for attending. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good night, everybody. See ya.